All right, you guys, so if you're not in the habit of watching the pre-lessons, you're going to want to go back and watch my pre-lesson for section 1-2. Um, boy, it will help you a ton because I'm going to assume that you've watched it. Uh, so here we go. We're just going to dive right in. And um, this says state the domain and the function. Uh, excuse me, state the domain of the function. And the vertical asymptote. Now, this I did not cover, really, in the pre-lesson. So I need to do a good job during the packet lesson explaining that. So I'm going to jump right in and just talk about that right down here. So if I said to you, uh, graph this function, f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. Now, I'm not going to actually graph this, okay? I'm just not, because that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is, you see that right there? I could say, aha, the domain would be x cannot equal 2, because you can't have zeros in the denominator. But this was my algebra 2 OK answer. But now I have to think of it this way. There's my 2. There's my open circle. So x can be anything in here. So I go negative infinity all the way up to 2 in union with everything from 2 all the way up to positive infinity. In other words, everything to the right. And that would be my answer. But my lesson is, what the heck is this thing called vertical asymptote? The, the thing is, this is, we're not graphing yet, but they're going to start showing you something that you have to be uh, aware of as we work our way towards graphing. You see, if I said, okay, x cannot equal 2, Back in my Algebra 2 thought process, I go to 2, and I draw in a dotted line for x. In other words, x equals 2. x can't equal 2, so it's a dotted line, which means my graph, I mean, again, it's just like, it's, it could be like this, uh, or it could come in like this. See, the graph wants to touch it, but it can't touch it. It, it's impassable because mathematically you can't have a graph at x equals 2. So keep that in mind. Because this says state the domain of the function and the vertical asymptotes. So we'll get to that. So here's my function. See that word right there? It's right here. Okay, but they're talking about the domain. So they're saying, hey, concentrate on this. Now this is a weird start, but... Remember in my pre-lesson, I said, what's the mathematical no-nos? You can't have zeros in a denominator, and you can't have square roots of negatives. Well, guess what? Neither of these apply, which means x can be anything. Because you're not going to get square roots of negatives, and you're not going to get a zero in the denominator. Well, how do I say this? Well, if I think of it visually, it means... My number line, whoops, there's a 1, and then a 3, and it goes to the negatives. It means everything. Well, how do I say this with pre-calc language? Negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. This is my answer for this function's domain. Now let's move on to this one. Now I got something cooking down here. Remember, if you have fractions, you can ignore the numerator. You can ignore this, because that actually represents y. And you look at this, and you go, aha, x can't, cannot equal 9. Again, algebra 2, you'd have been fine. But if I look at the number line, 0, 9, open circle, because that's what x can't equal. x can be anything to the right, and x can be anything to the left. So I need to describe this space. Well, x can go all the way to negative infinity, all the way up to 9, but it does not include it. That's why i got to have a parentheses there. Together with, that's what the u stands for, union with, uh, 9 all the way to infinity. And there's my answer for the domain. Wait a minute. This says, what's your vertical asymptote? Well, I'm going to go back down to here. Don't know if you remember this from Algebra 2, but the equation of that dotted line would be x equals 2. This is my vertical asymptote for this problem. So the name of your vertical asymptote will always be x equals whatever the value for x can't be. You see, for this one, 
x can't equal 9, so my vertical asymptote would be x equals 9. Now, again, I'm not graphing it, but if you did go to desmos.com, type this in, you will see that it will not cross x equals 9. Let's go to example 3. All right, we got a fraction. What am I not worried about? I'm not worried about a 0 in the numerator. It's also asking me for the domain, so I'm not worried about this, which represents y. Uh-oh, we got ourselves a trinomial, x, uh, what would that be, minus 3, and x plus 2. So if you have a trinomial down here or something factorable, you have to do it. Because now I can look at it and go, aha, I'm going to talk about on my number line what x can't equal. I can see that it can't equal a 3, so I'll put an open circle there. It can also not equal a negative 2, so I'll put an open circle there. Uh-oh. Now that means we have 1, here's area number 1, 2, 3 areas we need to describe mathematically. In other words, how do I describe this space? Well, that can be negative infinity all the way up to negative 2, parentheses, because it can't include it, together with... This space, which explains by negative 2 all the way up to 3, together with this space, oh, parentheses 3 all the way to infinity. Okay, so there's my domain. But wait a minute, what are my vertical asymptotes? Well, see how x can't equal negative 2? So I'd say x equals 2. I'm going to call them VAs, vertical asymptotes. And then the other thing that x can equal is 3. Whoops, that's supposed to be negative 2, sorry. And then x can also not equal 3, so my asymptote would be called x equals 3. Again, these are just vertical lines on my graph that the graph cannot cross. And if you're really curious, type that, type that into uh, Desmos and see what you get. Okay, like I said in the previous example, we have to factor the denominator if it's factorable. We're going to go x, x minus 6. I'm not worried about the numerator. I'm not worried about y. I'm going to concentrate on this. x cannot equal 0, and x cannot equal 6. So I'm going to draw a little line here. There's my 0. x cannot equal 0. Open circle. 6. Open circle. Uh-oh. I've got space number 1 again. I've got space number 2 I need to describe again, and I have space number 3 that I need to describe mathematically again. So how do I describe this? Negative infinity all the way up to 0, but it doesn't include it. Together with this space, 0 all the way to 6. Together with this space, 6 all the way to infinity. All right, there's my domain. What are my vertical asymptotes? Well, x equals 0 and x equals 6. There's my vertical asymptotes. All right. I kind of tore up the space that I needed for my next example. We'll do the best I can. Again, ignore the top, ignore the y. Factor, uh-oh, difference of two squares. x minus 5, x plus 5. So I'm going to have to draw my, I'm going to have to squeeze it in here. So here's my 0. Here's my negative 5. Here's my 5. Can't equal this. And it cannot equal this. Which means I can't equal that space, this space, and this space. So how do I explain that space? Negative infinity all the way up to negative 5. Together with, I'm going to put it over here, uh, negative 5 all the way up to 5. Together with this space, 5 all the way up to infinity. There's my domain. Now what are my VAs for this one? My vertical asymptotes for this one would be x equals negative 5 and x equals 5. All right. Now we got our only square root problem. What's the rule? The rule is this stuff can't be negative. How do we say that mathematically? That stuff can be 0 or anything positive. And that's just how you do. 
So now we're going to subtract 6, subtract 6. Wait. Negative 2x greater than or equal to negative 6. Here it is. We're dividing by a negative, you guys. Algebra 2, what do we do with the inequality? We flip it. How do I say this? Well, I'm going to try to break this off. If I looked at it, I would say, aha, uh -huh. here's my 3. x can be less than or equal to 3, so my picture looks like this. But how do I say that? I say it by saying negative infinity all the way up to negative, excuse me, positive 3. That's a positive 3. Looks like a negative, sorry. Bracket. Why bracket? Because it's less than or equal to 3. So, this is my domain in Algebra 2. This is my domain in pre-calculus. Okay? Now, vertical asymptotes, um, there, there really aren't any. Uh, we'll explain that more, but if you go to decimals, we'll talk about But we'll talk a lot about that in class. Okay? All right. Now, this is interesting. This says state the range. Okay. So the range is your y's. This is back to what we did in the previous lesson. The question is, how low does it go? Now that little negative 4 is supposed to be attached to that line. And that appears to be how low it goes. So we're going to assume that it gets there. That's dangerous in math. But. And then how high does it go? Well, both sides go up forever. So it goes up to infinity. See, that's easy because you've been given the graph. Now I'm going to pause this a second, and I'll be back with you in a second. All right, so I'm back. As you hopefully noticed, there wasn't graphs graphed on these prior to when I paused it, and now there are. The reason I did that is the next unit we're going to be graphing again. Um, so we haven't even taught you how to graph these yet. That will be in the next lesson. So I'm going to skip over that. If you don't trust these graphs that I've got written here, go ahead and type them into decimals. And I'll write that on here again. So desmos.com. And then just type these in and see what they look like. Um, but we're going to work again with more specifics in the next lesson. So I just gave them to you. Because the real idea is, what's the range? Because we're still just talking about domain and range. We haven't gotten into the intricate parts of graphing yet. So I spared you some pain. So the question is range. How low does it go? Well, it gets down to negative infinity. How high does it go? I know this is kind of faded here, but that's a 1, 2, 3, 4. And it grabs it, so we use a bracket. Now, this little rascal, the square root graph, okay? Uh, how low does it go? Well, again, this is faded, but it's up to, but that's the lowest point. So that's where we start, and it does touch it. It includes it. How high does it go? It's kind of flat. But it keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up and up forever. So there's your infinity. That's how high it goes. That finishes your second lesson of your second trimester.